Well, even if you can't quote them verbatim, almost all of us are familiar with what is known as the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the pure in heart. And the list goes on. Those are the Beatitudes that we have heard most of our lives, the Beatitudes recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. But Luke's Gospel gives its own version of them in this morning's text, and they aren't nearly so cozy, are they? Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit becomes blessed are you who are poor. Well, now that changes things a bit. And in Luke's gospel, blessed are those who th hunger and thirst for righteousness becomes blessed are you who are hungry now. Well, that's a completely different spin, isn't it? And so it is with Luke's version of the Beatitudes. They are more succinct. They, there aren't as many of them. And they aren't as spiritualized as the Beatitudes in Matthew. But that's not all that's different about the text. Whereas the setting for Luke's Beatitudes is on a level place or a great plain, Matthew's Beatitudes take place on a mountain, hence the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew envisions Jesus looking out over the crowds and talking to his disciples. But Luke goes into a bit more detail. They were a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. I think this is important in our understanding of Luke's not-so-warm-and-fuzzy Beatitudes. These weren't people of like mind. They weren't people of like economic status. They weren't even all Jewish. The authority with which Jesus spoke drew people from great distances and diverse cultures and social strata. And that's a challenge for a pastor. It's not so hard to make a sermon relevant to the listeners if everyone shares something in common, ethnicity, for instance, or social status, or sexual orientation, or religious background. But this was a huge crowd, a very diverse crowd, a crowd that wasn't even all Jewish. And Jesus' challenge was to address them all. And so I imagine him speaking first to the oppressed people in the crowd, to the poor, the hungry, and the grieving. Most farmers and herdsmen were able to produce just enough to pay taxes and offer sacrifices and still have food to put on the table for their two meals each day. Jesus began by addressing these poor and hungry people in the crowd. And with the very high infant mortality and average life expectancy of 29 years, grief was common. And Jesus spoke to the, those who were in mourning. And to those people, he offered hope. During times of crisis, we grasp hold of the words of a person of authority. The farmer breathes a sigh of relief when the weather forecaster says rains are on the way. The patient breaks into a smile when the doctor announces that the tumor is not malignant. Just so, the oppressed and downtrodden listeners in the crowds would have grasped hold of Jesus' words of blessing and promise of a new day. But remember, the crowds weren't only poor and oppressed. It was a mixture of all sorts of people. In the second portion of the text, in the woe unto you's, I don't think Jesus was saying they would be punished for having money in their pockets or having a full belly or for enjoying a good joke. Rather, I think he was saying, look, people, step out of yourself and look around you. Even though you aren't hungry, 
There are people who are. Can't you do anything about that? Look at the person sitting next to you who is barely getting by while you have more than enough money. Share some of your good fortune with that person. And the woman beside you who is weeping over the loss of her children, can't you show some compassion? Because if you can't, then woe is you. Things will change on the day of reckoning. That's what I believe Jesus was saying to the crowds. Step outside of yourselves and be compassionate. In fact, just a few verses later, he recaps and summarizes by saying, Do to others as you would have them do to you. Be merciful just as God is merciful. Can you imagine how different things would be if we did this? If we stepped outside of ourselves for a moment and offered blessings and affirmations to each other the way Jesus did. I'm going to give, you, give us that opportunity right now. I want you to take a few minutes and offer a word of blessing to the person sitting close to you today. And if anyone is sitting alone, then get out of your seat and walk over and offer them a blessing. Now I know this is outside of the comfort level for many of you here today. And you may say to yourselves, I don't know what to say. So I've taken care of that. Inside each of your worship bulletins is a blessing written on a white slip of paper. If you wish, you can simply read that blessing to the person. But first, make sure you pause and look them in the eye. Speak the words slowly and sincerely. And it's not against the rules to offer a blessing to more than one person. Now go. All right, enough already, enough blessing. So how was that for you? For those who were able to move past their discomfort, how did it feel to hear someone say to you that you were important, beautiful, or loved? And more importantly, why aren't we doing more of this? What is it that holds us back from offering words of hope and affirmation to each other? Jesus offered words of hope, but he also sternly told people to step out of themselves and to show compassion and mercy to each other. I've also placed another slip of paper in your worship bulletin. 
a purple one. And on that slip of paper is a suggestion of how you can step out of yourself this week. It may invite you to send a card to a person on this week's prayer list, or to pick up an item for the Red Door Pantry, or to become more mindful of whether your clothes are made in sweatshops or not. This week I want to invite you to be a people of blessing and action. Offer a kind word to someone or several someones. And then do something that is other oriented. Something that takes you outside of yourself. And at the end of the week, reflect on how these things made you feel. And maybe make it a part of your weekly routine. Bless others and you will be blessed. Show mercy and you will benefit from it. And may God bless us all in our endeavors. Amen.